could you share an overview of the importance of forgiveness and, and maybe some tips yeah. for how to forgive yeah. people that have hurt yeah. us? Yeah, forgiveness. Including our government. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah forgiveness is a, is a big one, and it, and it is loaded with a certain amount of meaning to different people in different ways. Um, to me, at least, forgiveness is really about letting go, fundamentally. And it is a state of mind that gives us freedom. And, you know, when we are not forgiving or not allowing ourselves to experience all the emotions which we're carrying in our life, then we really become slaves of our lower vibrational emotions, like anger, revenge, yes, stress, very true. antipathy, you know. And so by being a slave to those lower frequency emotions, we become a product of those emotions and, and we're emanating that magnetic field. So we'll get more of it <laughs> till we learn our lesson. Yeah, well, we crystallize that. Yes. We, you know, we, we, we crystallize that consciousness in our body as tumors, as, as uh, you know, inflammatory syndromes, yes. as skin growths, as, you know, as excess body fat or as, 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 uh, hunger and we emaciate you know i mean the we people don't realize that a, a lot of what we're not forgiving is what we're embodying we have to carry it somewhere yes. so we we create an icon out of it and oftentimes that's what the reason for the pain teacher showing up is to say hey, hey look here yes absolutely and, and the forgiveness is not about condoning the actions like you were speaking to earlier it's really just like allowing ourselves to heal it's, uh, it's allowing us to liberate ourselves from victimhood and so forgiveness isn't about forgetting. It's it's really accepting what has transpired. And as you were saying with Flo, choosing to move forward. So, you know, as we embark on this journey of forgiveness, we shed the weight of these negative emotions that really have burdened us and that take a toll on our bodies and minds and spirits, as you were saying, that, that are fostering that anxiety, that depression, that stress, that pain. And so in their absence, suddenly there's a new space, a spiritual path that's uh, unencumbered by that baggage. So it's, it's really um, quite important. And as we forgive and let go of the past, we step into a, more of an observer role. And again, something you were speaking to earlier about you know, equanimity, being equanimous, not heavily charged one way or the other, but uh, you know, as, as observer. And so you know, we can immerse ourselves, you know, we're on this earthly journey, you know, with a, with a purpose. And so we want to immerse ourselves in, in a unique, you know, in, in a unique energy pattern, which is us. And um, we ultimately want to transmute all these different energies through the power of love. It's like why we need the power of forgiveness to learn the power of unconditional love. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. So, you know, it's not about, you know, this justice. I mean, there needs to be justice uh, in the world. Um, but forgiveness is not about helpless acceptance and surrendering to defeat and being weak or evading the cost of justice. It's about how we hold that profound hurt in our heart. And then, you know, how do we work to repair it and prevent its repetition? Mm -hmm. you, you've probably heard... Uh, you know, that Tibetan Buddhist story about the two monks who meet years after a big release from prison where they were tortured. And the first monk asks, you know, have you forgiven them? The second responds, I will never forgive them, ever. And the first monk then says, well, they still have you in prison, don't they? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, and that, that's, that's uh, those are, those are, those stories are very, uh, powerfully true you know that's why they're so often used as teaching stories but i think too um i think forgiveness is if you take it from the not from the context of saying um i don't hold you responsible for what you did to me uh, because a lot of people think that think that forgiving means that they no longer hold the person responsible for maybe the abuse that they've had. But if, 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 if the forgiveness is, I now forgive this person 
for the trespass that they have made on me, but I also forgive myself so that I can let go of it. Yes. In other words, the forgiveness is really just giving yourself permission to stop living in the past. Trust that, you know, like there's an old, the old saying, Lord, give me the strength to handle what I can and the wisdom to know yes. what I can't. Yes. And just say, I, I can't make this person be a different person. I can't, you know, make my father stop being abusive, but I can forgive myself and forgive him so that I can detach from having to stay in the repeated loop of the past yes. of what happened and, and why I'm now not able to do this or I can't do that. And, and just allow myself to use forgiveness as a means of coming into the now and being yes, with myself. Exactly. So, and you know, say, now what, what can I do with what I've got? You know, here I am sitting here, I've still got me. I'm, I'm okay, yeah, I'm hurt, but you know, if, if, I, if I take what I've got right now and start working with it, then I'm, I'm moving forward and, and I can ultimately seek to find the meaning. And, and you know, so many of the things that happen to us turn out to be just what we needed to develop the empathy and compassion to help the people we have soul contracts with along the way. Yes. And, and often, uh, you know, you know, it's so hard, Paul, some of these issues and, and paradigms, um, because, you know, who wants to see another person hurt? But there was one story I remember um, someone telling me about that often, it is those who love us most who agree to be their abuser in in this life because it's not a particularly well loved role, <laughs> no. you know. And um, you know whether that's true or not, I don't know. But but the forgiveness is ultimately it's for ourselves. Um, yeah, you know, it's not about judgment. Uh, it's not about the other person. Obviously, the other person's in there, but. But it, it really is our liberation. So we've got that flow. Yes. I noticed that you'd created some meditations to support women in Africa to awaken their divine feminine when I was looking at your website. To me, it's a bit counterintuitive that the women of Africa, of all places, need help accessing the divine feminine. I was wondering if you could share an encapsulation of what the divine feminine is. Uh, and then you know, what was happening in Africa that you think d diminished their connection to the divine feminine? Yeah, well, first of all, I think it's a global issue. And, and I just happened to be focused on Africa because I had visited there. Um, and I wanted to try and do something to be supportive. Uh, like if I even look at my own province here in Canada, if the statistics are correct, there are 14,000 women who need shelters every month. This is like absolutely outrageous. And what amazes me is they don't get the proper funding to be supported. Um, and when you say you mean they need shelters, what exactly are you, are you saying? They're experiencing some sort of abuse uh, or trauma at home, um, oh, okay. usually at the hands of the masculine. It's not always exclusively yeah. that, but largely. And I would call it the wounded masculine. So, so for me, the, the, you know, to keep it brief, like the divine feminine, it's not gender based. We all have the divine feminine and the divine masculine within us. It's not if you're a woman, you've got that, and man, you've got, you know, masculine. No, we've got both of those. That's the polarity. Um, but there are sorts of qualities. So, for me, when I think about the divine feminine. Um, it, it's it's coming from a place of of creation. Um, it's a place if we brought it down into simpler words like emotional, uh, cooperative, being versus doing, creative versus outcome. Um, you know, intuition, sensitivity. Um, so you know, these are qualities that are in men and women. Um, but it's really important to make sure it's clear that it's not it's not a particular gender. But we tend to have right. associations with gender just because that's how we are. And um, what women do, 
women give birth, men don't give birth. That's a creative process. Uh, it's the egg and the sperm. And so the masculine tends to have more of a, a forward energy. So they work together in harmony. And that's what we're trying to rebuild here on the planet. Um, but what got me on onto this, I was so shocked. Because um, I had never been to Africa. Uh, and then I was talking with various people. And then w one of the big issues was specifically in South Africa, but it exists in other African countries too, that surprised me was there are a lot of men who have babies uh, with women, but then completely ignore the woman as soon as the baby's born. Um, this is a big problem there. And I'm going, what's going on? Like, so... Have they got a bunch of video games over there? <laughs> well... Because <laughs> once men start playing video games, they ignore responsibilities. That's one of the yes. problems. <laughs> well, it, it became very clear to me, and again, it, globally, it's not just in Africa. It's here in North America. It's in South America. It's in Asia. It, it's part of this greater cycle where the wounded masculine has really hurt the divine feminine. So we've got this wounded feminine. And... Um, you know, this has terrible consequences on us individually, families, relationships, whether it's at work or within the family. Uh, uh, really, it, it, it's everywhere. It, this is beingness issues. Beingness issues don't just turn up between, you know, a husband or a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. It is in all our relationships. And so mm -hmm. you wonder, like, what I think we're at the precipice with awakening technology, if we want to call it, we had our industrial revolution, we've had our computer te external technological revolution, but now we've got this internal revolution uh, that we've we've got going uh, to really shift and change things. Um, so, yeah, so that's I started um, doing some live. I'm working with a. Um, South African woman, we do a live uh, meditation. And so in that meditation, uh, there's a little bit of channeling. Um, so some words are coming through to talk about, you know, reconnecting with that divine feminine um, and also healing. So doing some energy healing uh, to help uh, the women on the call. But ideally, we'd be doing this with the men as well. Um, uh, but you know, we start where we start and, uh, yes. you know, it, it's, if the women are really healthy, the men will get into line eventually. Uh, but we want the men to yes. be healthy and not have to rely on the women that so they can just both come together, uh, you know, mutually. 